Okay, today uh, we're going to discuss the visceral larva migrants. So, okay, we'll be discussing about your the three other species of your nematodes which are causing the visceral larva migrants. We have here your, for the first one, we have your Toxocara. Then we have your um, Angiostrangulus cantonensis. And lastly, we have your Natostoma. Okay, first, we have here your Toxocara. Okay, there are two species here of your Toxocara. We have your Toxocara canis and we have here your Toxocara catis. Ay, Toxocara canis and Toxocara cati. So, try to cause here uh, Toxocariasis. So, the definitive host of these two parasites from the world itself, so Toxocara canis, cat, canis here is your dog ascarid. And Katia on the other hand is your cat Ascarid. So the habitat for that, the final habitat for the, the, your adult worm could be found in your small intestine. Mode of in, MOT mode of transmission is basically by ingestion of the contaminated food and water containing the embryonated egg, which is its infective stage. Okay, for the worm morphology. So basically, your toxocara. Okay, so we have that one toxocara kati and kainis. Toxocara kati is, as we described that one, as to the body of the adult worm. So toxocara kati is longer than broad, and toxocara kati is uh, broader than long. Canis is longer than broad. So, medyo ma mas mahaba kesa sa malapad. Mahaba siya. So, like, for example, ito. Kesa malapad. This is bro longer than broad. Kesa naman, medyo mataba siya. Okay, broader than long. That's your cati. So, adult worm is characterized by the presence of the ring-like structure on the anterior end. You call it, you call it one as your cervical alley. Okay, for the egg, okay, so the egg of this one would most likely resemble our Ascaris lumbricoides. Okay, so only that your Ascaris lumbricoides is much thicker and transparent compared to the coarsely pitted eggshell of your Toxocara. Okay, we have the life cycle, so for the Toxocara, Again, the dog and the cat serve as the definitive host for this one. And human only serve as the accidental host. Okay, the life cycle here begins upon ingestion of contaminated, of contaminated food and water containing the embryonated ova, which is the infective stage. Then the ova go to your MES, it hatch the small intestine, where eventually try also to uh, mature to become adult on that area. Then after that one, you have your male and female adult worm that try to copulate. And then the female adult worm try to lay eggs. The eggs here would unembryonated. And that will be uh, shed on the feces of the infected patient or in the, in the worm, in the dog or in the cat, for example. And then it go to the soil. In the soil, in the soil it is where eventually try to undergo embryonation, making that one as infective. Okay, but then again, for the, the larva here, this one is also capable of uh, extra intestinal infection. It could eventually go to your lungs, to your brain, to your heart, or even your eyes. In the eyes, it try to cause here a chronic ocular manifestation. We call that one as your chronic endophthalmitis. Okay, in the eyes, once it go to your eyes, could have here your eye infection. We call that one as your chronic end of thalmitis. Okay, so this would have here characterized by the presence of the eosinophilia, with mark hepatomegaly and the hyperglobulinemia. Okay, preventive measures. So since this one is from the dog and the cat, so you just need to stay away from the dog and the cats, or it could have deworm your pets. Okay, the next one, we have your Angiostrongylus cantonensis. Other name for this one is your rat lung worm. Okay, so since rat lung worm, shall we are expecting here that the rat 
serve as its definitive host. And then again, human serve here only as accidental host. And human become only here as its um, accidental host and also the dead end infection. Okay, for the uh, habitat, so it will have your pulmonary arteries or in the lungs serving as its uh, final habitat for the adult worms. And the mode of transmission is by ingestion of the third stage larva. A uh, larva present in your intermediate host, which is the snails. Okay, we have here the morphology of the adult worm. So for the female adult worm, so we describe this one as having the having the barber's pole appearance. So the one, I think you've seen that one sa mga parlor or sa mga Diba, pag Barber's pole, characters here by um, overlapping or what do you call this one? Basta whitish na color. So, parang may white, the next may red, parang ganun. It's because here of the looping out of the uterus na white and the intestinal tract is red in color because it tried to ingest the blood, giving a barber's pole appearance. Okay, for the male naman, so it's much shorter compared to the female adult worm. And that one will have here a uh, copulatory porsa. Uh, we have here the life cycle of your Angiostrongylus cantonensis. Again, the rats serve here as its definitive host, where most likely um, the adult worm lodge in the pulmonary lungs, where eventually try to develop to become adult worm on that area. Then try to have your adult male and female. Then a female worm here try to lay egg. And this egg here hatch in the pulmonary lungs to become the L1. The L1 from that area in your lungs, in the lungs of your rat, that will be swallowed back to the esophagus down to the small intestine, large intestine, pass out your L1, and it will go to the water. Okay, then eventually... Uh, transform to become L2 or the second stage larva. Once become the L2, second stage larva that will be taken up by the first intermediate host, which is the snail. And inside the body of your first intermediate host, the L2 become L3. And then if you try to ingest the L3, so like the rodents, example for that, your rats ingest the snail containing the L3, become infected. And the L3, third stage larva, go to the intestinal tract, migrate up to the pulmonary lungs, where eventually become its final habitat where it transforms to become adult worms. And again, the cycle goes on. Okay, among the manifestation of your angiostrongylus cantonensis, try to cause serious eosinophilic meningoencephalitis. Uh, eosinophilic meningoencephalitis, so eosinophilia will be present. It's meningoencephalitis or meningitis because again, it's the final habitat could be found in the lungs, so medyo malapit siya sa meninges of the brain and could infect that area. Okay, so could identify that one through your CSF as your sample to recover the adult worm or even the larva. Then you could also have the MRI, MRI if it already affects the brain. Okay, prevention, get and then proper adequate cooking the snail. And then again, we are not eating the snail naman, di ba? Accidentally lang. For some people. Then we have also here the last one, uh, Natostoma spinigerum. So, Natostoma spinigerum try to cause a creeping eruption, young edema, and wandering swelling. We get infected by this one by ingestion of your second intermediate host, and its infective stage is also the third stage larva. Okay, we have here the morphology of your adult worm for your anatostoma spinigerum. For the male and female adult worm, it's curved ventrally, although a morphology nila nito is almost the same as with our trematodes. Only that the body is curved, so para siyang still round worm pa rin siya. Unlike mga trematodes natin, flat worms. Ang kanyang head, oh, anyway, the entire body of the worm here will be covered by the spines. Kaya nga tinawag siyang spiny jerome because of the spines. And ang pinaka mouth part niya, meron siyang mga recurve hooks. Okay, the egg on the other hand, 
will be resembled here our ascaris lubricoides na egg. So, parang thin shelled fertilized egg din siya. Only that, one end niya, meron siyang mucoid plug. Okay, we have here the life cycle of your netostoma spinigerum. So, you get affected by the third stage larva. The third stage larva are found in the second intermediate host. The second intermediate host could be a fish, a snail, or frog. Pwede nang frog. That contains here the third stage larva. Then the third stage larva or the second intermediate host here containing the third stage larva will be ingested by the definitive host. Definitive host could be a dog, the cat, or wild pigs. Then go to the MES, small intestine. In the small intestine, to try to become adult, developing to become male, the female adult worm. Then the female adult worm, try, they try to copulate here and lay eggs. The egg here is unsegmented or unembryonated. Go to the body of water, we undergo embryonation. Then hatch to become L1. This L1... The larva will be taken up by the first intermediate host, which are the copepods or mga small na fish. Inside the body of the copepods here, the L1 transforms to become L2. Then this copepod here will be kainin siya ulit nito ng second intermediate host. And within the second intermediate host, the L2, the third, second stage larva maging L3 or the third stage larva. And the entire cycle goes on. Again, human only serve here as accidental hosts. This pathology, so we classify that one as natostomiasis interna. Natostomiasis interna, on the other hand, so this one is characterized by the presence of your worms within the tumors uh, because, of course, here the infestation of the intestinal mucosa, so that inside the tumors, nasa loob ang ating mga worms. So we call that one as natostomiasis interna. Pag externa naman, so this characterized here by manifestation of the infection, characterized by the presence or the for production of the abscess, we call this one abscess pockets or indurated nodules or with central abscess. Ito yung mga ano, damage sa ating intestinal mucosa. Some other thing here, the worm here also try to produce uh, a tunnel that would allow them to go from one tissue to another tissue, other part of your body, producing here a creeping eruption or larva migrants. Could also go to other part of your body, including your CNS. Laboratory tests, you could have here your demonstration of the identification of the worm from the lesion. So, pwede mo siyang, when you perform surgical operation, so pwede makita. You can also perform here the skin test, the intradermal skin test, using specific antigen, precipitin test, but also here the ELISA. Treatment, prevention, control, so may bendazole, and of course here safe drinking water and um, adequate drinking or adequate, proper adequate cooking of your uh, definitive hosts like, okay, we have here your dog, the cat, or even frogs, but of course we are not eating that one. Okay, so that's all for your visceral larva migrants.